Hi, thanks for tuning in. This is a weekend review for the week ending July 29th, 2022. We are looking at uh, trading view, which is showing me all of uh, the, so the stocks and sectors that I like to follow and their performance month to date or Q3. And what you see here, um, these are the leaders of the majors and the sectors that I follow. Crocs is the leader within IWM. ENPH is a leader within SPY and TAN. Tesla is the leader within the Qs. NVIDIA is the leader within SMH. CRISPR is the leader within ARC. And so on and so forth. So when I look at this chart, what it's telling me is IWM and SPY are outperforming QQQ and SMH. SMH has been a laggard all year. It's also telling me that things like metals, TNX, the 10 year, crude oil, all these things are down in July. This is supposed to be peak utilization, right? In terms of demand for oil consumption and energy consumption. Uh, so let's take a look at year to date just to give you the bigger picture. Those things were leading year to date. Um, but since June 14th, TNX has topped. And at that same time, this blue line here, ENPH, the leader within SPY, bottomed. And, if, and, and we'll look at ENPH later, but she's rallied almost 70% since that moment. And she set a new all-time high. And if you look at this as well, like Bitcoin, ARK, all the junk is still down 50% on the year. Crocs included. Crocs is down 45% on the year. So the stock that's already up, just to, to show you this guys here again, the stock that's up the most in July, Crocs, is still down 50% on the year. So there's there, there's a lot of setups that we're going to look at here, but, but I wanted to look at the relative performance just to give you guys an idea of like who's leading who's lagging, where's the money flowing, um, to make sure that, you know, even if you have a well-rounded portfolio, including bonds, commodities, and stocks, the idea is that you, you would kind of shift your allocation during periods of outperformance. So, for example, in Q1, when TNX was breaking out above that 172 range, it made sense to own energy and commodities. DBC and XLE outperformed in Q1. And then in Q2, as TNX was topping, those same sectors kind of put in topping candles. And right now, while you do have Bitcoin outperforming, the traditional leaders of just SPY and IWM are where you should have your money. And so we'll take a look at the technicals here. Um, but I just, I really like what TradingView has with this one chart how you can overlay a bunch and just come over here and add them in the compare symbol tool. I, I really like that feature. All right, so now we'll take a look at um, the system results down here, this composite line, uh, the longs uh, that we have are all across the board telling me to be very, very, very patient with this move to see it play out. This is unlike the March, it is very similar to the March move, but it's unlike the March move, uh, where you have the 510 cross, but price gets rejected and puts in a reversal signal at the 20 and the PPO never crossed. Right now we've got a PPO cross and the histogram is positive for the first time in since November 15th. Okay, you're talking nine months, eight months. That being said, this composite line that, that's generated is based on the previous signals. Um, and the performance, like obviously, if you just buy and hold, uh, you're gonna you're gonna beat you're gonna beat me here on spy. Um, but we're gonna run through all of the weeklies real quick just to show you how they all look the same. Okay, they're all they've all fired long. They fired long at the end of June. Again, when TNX topped. Um, and our 
projecting much higher prices. Uh, that being said, you know, these things can also get stopped out. I mean, you see these exits here. We've, we've had a few of them since the top, right? There was an entry here in November that was a break even, basically, and an entry here in March, another break even on the queues. So we're going to see how, how, you know, how much this one may have. Um, structurally and like subjectively, I do see a zigzag that has completed. I think this this trade is, is certainly um, like if I were to give you my subjective opinion, this is a corrective pattern, a five three five pattern that completed at the one dot o extension of wave A B, and we look at these. These are all Elliott wave patterns. Um, so yeah, like we have what looks like a corrective pattern. And when you zoom all the way out to the monthly, you'll see um, even even more evidence of a correction in an uptrend. And what we're looking to see here is do the bulls defend um, the, the 40, which has which has really been the trend going back to the beginning of this bull market. So I know everyone wants to say we're in a bear market. Okay, maybe we are, maybe we aren't. I could tell you that there's a lot of volatility. There's been a huge decline in the stock market. All that's true. But in terms of like this long term trend, I mean, it's very, very, very well still up. Okay, um, all of that being said, we've got the monthly PPO was at 15 here at the peak and has now come all the way back to four. This is very normal. It does this all the time in the bull market. In a bear market, this thing can 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 continue down, which again is the path of least least resistance right now, for a year and a half, two years, until all the inflation issues are resolved, right? Overlay the macro. Um, so, you know, I, I can't tell you if this is going to last for forever, or if this is the low forever, who knows who cares? All we look at is the data here in front of us. The high last month was 314.56. The close this month was 315.46. Okay, so closed above the previous month's high. That's the first time that's happened since November. So the idea that there could be a sustained rally from here on the Q's, SPY, and all these charts is entirely possible. So we're gonna go through SMH as well. You'll see the same thing here. Another 50% correction in the books. So that same subjective Elliott wave I was talking about before, ABC complete, 50% retrace complete. That allows a new impulse higher. You now look at the projections from my Momentum system, they're projecting all-time highs on all the majors. Again, these signals can fail. They've failed three times now, okay? But what ends up happening with all of these momentum systems is, and I'll even show you, they're going to fail often. The average wins a third, 30% of the time, but... When you do get that win, you get these fat tail distributions, these 80% wins. And they tend to come after losses, okay? And they come after frequent losses. That idea where the market scares you from taking the trade. That is very common, and this is what it looks like. And if you just keep going down the majors, which I'm going to, I wanna show you. Look, IWM, also long now. Again, same win rate over here, 15%. Very low win rate on IWM. And that's because IWM hasn't done anything but one move in five years. Four years now, sorry. I mean, really, you could go back to February 2017, uh, and we're not that far from that price. Um, or October 2017, we're not that far from the high that month. Um, and yeah, price just hasn't done much here in IWM, but monthly PPO has reset to the zero line. The weekly did give you that bull, um, 
the bear trap, I'm sorry, just like you had a bull trap breakout up here at the top, close above this breakout level. You had the close below this breakdown level, recapture, back test, launch. So you have the same trap. And again, you've got system long on all these charts. Um, and you can keep going through and it's like, you have to ask yourself if you're a bear, right? Like what's the probability that all of my momentum alerts fired and they don't fire all the time. The last time they fired was May and before that was March. That's it. I guess you had a, a couple in January um, that were, you know, uh, no trades. Um, so, you know, and, and from where I sit, you know, this is a great long term entry for XLF. All of these charts are telling me that, you know, you have to be open to the idea that this composite line plays out. I'm not saying you're going to, you know, perfectly. But these things remain long for, lo for for more than three candles, right? If the monthlies are flipping up, th this is going to remain long for, it could be, you know, nine weeks, right? Could be as something as like, hey, we're here, here we are. And, um, you know, for, for XLF, technically bottoming here, J July 11th. We're on week three and we've got six more weeks. Like it, it, it'll be September before she pulls back. Who knows? I, I don't, I can't predict those things. You know, I can tell you that this, is, this one's weaker, right? I can tell you where the strength is. I've shown you that. SPY is stronger than XLF. But what I'm trying to point out by even bringing up XLF and IYT and all these, you know, laggards historically is that they're all long. And they're all trying to capture this 20. And the other sectors have captured it. And you have this bear trap look. I mean, you have the trap, right? Just like you had the trap at the top, you now have the trap at the bottom. And then when I add in my subjective Elliott wave nonsense, right? We've got our move. So, you know, we'll see if it was enough. But the idea is you get an uptrend and within that uptrend you get these corrections right another uptrend another correction and when the correction completes you go on to set another all-time high right correction all-time high correction all-time high correction all-time high correction you fill in the blank i mean you want to be the guy betting that this is the time it doesn't set a new all-time high that's fine that's not my game. I mean, we've already had the bear move. You already had the ABC. I mean, I haven't bought this thing since way back here. You know, so when you look at these things on, on all, all of these, you know, laggards. And I mean, look, I want, I'll show you some of my favorite setups. Like Crocs right now. Like, look at the performance. It's incredible. It's a 50-50 win rate. Now we'll say the ADX is troughing out. So what's going to happen is ADX is either going to flip up right here and confirm that this is a strong uptrend or it's going to flip up and immediately reverse. We'll find out either way. Um, the test is weekly 20 this week. So like uh, 64 bucks, 63 bucks, $62. Anywhere in that range is, is where I'm looking to add to this position this week. And when I see a, a breakout like this in terms of, hey, we have a trend, a downtrend and a, and a declining 20, and we've captured all of that. And I look at the monthly and it looks like this, just all time high, coming off an all time high, um, holding this high. Again, that, that makes my subjective analysis very good. And it continues to, to support the idea that, that we could come and set an all time high from here. So 4637 versus 4608. So this is an outside monthly reversal candle. They broke the low, then closed at the high in the month and recaptured EMA five and the 40 on the monthly. Very, very bullish sign. PPO reset from 39 to three. So again, what you wanna see is a move and then a reversion to mean and that allows you, just because you get back to mean doesn't mean you're going to go set a new all-time high. 
it just it just is telling you that this is where the bulls are going to put up a fight or this is where the bears are going to put up a fight and right here that like you can go back and look like the bulls lost the fight at the zero line and then trend mode down right trend mode down then boom beautiful histogram above zero you know separation between blue and red and then just trend mode and and literally the trade became very very easy until the, the blue line started to curl down and that's kind of where we are now blue lines curling up so there's going to be some back and forth it's not just going to go straight up um, but the idea is if this histogram's curling you have to be open to the idea that something like this is going to happen at minimum right back to the 20. Um, and when we look at the weekly here I, I just love love the look of that i mean let's take a look at emph another one that we've that we've traded and had for a while um you know buy and hold on emph like buy and hold is always going to beat the system a trading system that is going in and out um if the buy and hold uh stock is at all-time highs right so emph is at all-time highs a beautiful beautiful performer um, and you look at this, like I'm, I'm still projecting that we get up here to about 350, uh, 320. Like if they do it this week, 330s. Um, but by the end of August, 350 on this name and any pullback into 220 or 280 or even down here, uh, the low of this candle, 229. So if that area gets tested at all in the coming, like, so let's say, we, we keep going higher, we tag this area, then we do the pullback to 282, that's the setup. If we pull back to start the week, here's the setup. I can't tell you what's gonna happen. I'm just gonna have a few different plays. Again, I was in from the one, where was I? Yeah, back here. Right at the beginning, this 510 cross. After she tagged this blue line, Add it again, played her a little bit here, but really gave her the time here because of my subjective, not my objective, subjective analysis. ABC up, ABC down, and that's the spring. That's how they coil the spring. They need the three, three, five, right? And we've done, as soon as you, you can just look for this after a big move, up or down, up or down, doesn't matter and you will get the high probability impulse moves. And so now you put the FIB um, extension tool and you'll see that 302 is the target. And again, this is for a wave three. Uh, you should still have much, much higher prices. And, and that's what makes this pattern so great is that it's you know this, this up, down. Some people call that like harmonic crab pattern. I, I don't really know. Um, I just view this as three, three, five. And the idea is, is that you're just confusing everyone in both directions with the three, three. So you have this huge move, then you have the three, three and everyone sees bare flag, but the whole time, this was the correction and it ended. And this was the start of something new. Okay, that being said, Tan, again, I showed you has, has been one of the outperformers. Um, and if you keep going down down the list, another one I really, really like. Again, on the weekly, not as strong, like you can see the composite here, not as strong as some of these other names. And that's because she's been really range bound for a very long time. That being said, this looks like a triangle to me. I don't know, symmetrical triangle. Um, until she gets above 86, you don't really have a big breakout like you, you that you saw there in the MPH, but you do have a technical breakout here above 71. So I was using this level here this week to buy, and now we're up about 10, 11% on the trade. We're looking really for 86 to 96. And uh, again, from there, uh, a pullback. But that was the trade. Um, and I still think this one has some legs on it, um, but we will see, we're, we're, we're approaching this area of concern. The 1.0 extension, a trend line, a bit extended from the 10, not horrible, but you know, could easily pull back to start the week all the way back to 77, 7620, confirm that this, what was resistance is now support and then trend higher. Obvious uptrend, 
give her time, let her work. The stocks that are green on the monthly, green. And again, this is a close above the trend line. That's exactly what you want to see. Um, so let's take a look at NVIDIA, some of the weaker, maybe we'll call them laggards, um, still projecting all time highs. Okay. And, and this area back here is everyone. Oh man, I'd love it if we could get that entry. But this ABC that happened, again, this zigzag that you've seen everywhere, hit the 1.0 and reversed. Closed below, recapture, back test, recapture all the mo moving averages on the weekly. And now you've got the 510 bull cross, PPO about to cross. And we're going to watch this histogram if it can put in something of a positive close, again, for the first time since December. So, you know, this is where we are. I know it, it seems like things have already moved a lot, or it seems like we're down a lot, depending on when you bought. Um, the reality is this, this area here, this was a bull flag, right? We, we called this one out in real time. This bull flag, where they consolidated, they just came back to test. And so you can even view that as a throwback Right, we broke out from this area, we're throwing back, and now we're gonna head higher at least to challenge the 20 and the 10 on the monthly. And you look at this name, it's clearly a laggard, um, but uh, is definitely one worth watching because she's been a leader before. Let's take a look at some of the riskier assets like Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is long on the weekly. And I really, really, really like this setup, basic trend line, right? We're at the weekly 200. You go to the monthly, you're at the monthly 40 PPO reset on the monthly from 52 to seven. So that that's what you want to see. Um, I mean, it doesn't really get any clearer than that holding above that again subjectively tells me one two three four that is definitely possible you do something like this right i mean this thing is still in an uptrend people don't like to say that this still is just a zigzag until this trend is broken the volatility is insane on this security. Uh, Bitcoin is just one of those. You kind of have to trade a little bit or you just have to hold and never look at it. Um, I don't touch the thing. I like to cover it because I know other people like are interested in it and I'll get more clicks if I cover it. That being said, the system output here is what it is. And she's trying to capture the 10 for the first time since the March entry. So there was an entry in March and it was a break even stop down 4%. That's nothing. All right. That's all you can do here. Cause you know, one of these times you're going to get a fat tail that looks like that or looks like that. And you're going to walk away saying, man, I wish I took the trade. That's how this game works. They, they, it's like touching the stove. Hey, I took the trade here and I got burned. Hey, I took the trade here and I got burned. And then the very next trade is the trade you should have taken. That's momentum trading. That's, that is non-discretionary trend following. I can't explain it any other way. I know it's frustrating at times, but that's how it works. And all of my, my charts, all of the charts that are using the same scripts that I use to identify um, uh, these trends, right? We're looking at, you know, moving average, we're looking at momentum, we're looking at histograms, we're looking at ADX, we're looking at PPO, those types of things. When all of those align, you, you get these buy sells. Okay. I can then overlay my subjective Elliott wave. And when I see a subjective Elliott wave pattern, corrective, corrective pattern completing within the context of an uptrend on a monthly time frame, a quarterly time frame. There gives probability 
to the momentum trades that fire from that configuration. So the idea would be to use the subjective analysis to try to reduce the false positives that the objective non-discretionary system generates. And I know other traders that use multiple systems to take trades. I like to keep it simple. Let's follow the momentum. Um, but yeah, another chart uh, that's showing you, you know, here we are, um, a three out of uh, every, you know, three out of nine. So 30% win rate. Um, but when you win, the average win is 252%. So that's what we're looking for. That's what I'm scanning for. That's the type of trader I am. I'm not looking to scalp hourly, you know, daily trades. I'm looking for these fat tails um, because from them, you will be able to profit. Okay, that's my rant. <laughs> we'll move on to gold. We do have a change in character. Um, we are still short though. Okay. And all of these wins have been just whipsaw. I mean, she's just whipsawed for two years. So you can call this a bull flag pattern. You can call this an impulse lower, a lower high. And if they get below uh, 157 at all, it's game over. It's game over. This thing's going much, much lower. 118 to 127. However, they could stay above 155, 157 and start marching back towards 193. And you've got yourself a very different situation. The fact of the matter is the, th the thing is sideways. So if it's sideways, we call that dead money and I'm not interested in it. There's just nothing to do here. If she gets below this level, then gets right back above, I'd be interested. And if she gets all the way back up here to the top of the range and gets above, I'd be interested. Until either of those things happen, I'm avoiding gold. Um, and when, when we uh, talk about gold, um, we should definitely, definitely, definitely talk about TNX. So I'd covered this pattern for a very long time. People laughed, that's okay, those are the best trades. This line here, right, and this line here, when I see uh, price expanding like that, right, Com comes in, breaks a low, goes back up to where the high was, breaks that high, goes back down to where the low was, breaks that low, comes back down to where the high was, right, you see, see the pattern? You have to look to sell the break of that high. And that's what what I was looking to do. And because of that, I avoided energy. I avoided commodities. I avoided gold. I avoided all of that trade in Q2. And that was a huge win for me. Some wins are just not taking the trades as they come. Because there were a lot of bull traps at the end of that move. Now, when I look at this chart, ADX is peaking and falling down. Histogram is curling down. PPO appears to be taking a breather, um, but closing below 283 is a tell. And this is where we're looking. Again, I've, I've been calling this out the whole time. If you believe that history doesn't necessarily repeat, but it rhymes, when you have these periods of closing below the band, price comes back into the tent. That's just how it works. So one, two, three, four, five closes below the bottom, boom, right back into the 10. Then the next move, okay? Close below the bottom, boom, back into the 20. So here we are, close above the top four, then close inside. So what are we looking for? Go back to the 10. Where's the 10? Probably around two, three, two, two, five this month. Now, if you believe the inflation narrative is here to stay and the 10 year is going to break out for years because the Fed's raising and is going to continue to raise and the market believes it, if you're in that camp, then this is probably just a dip to buy, right? You're going to buy commodities. You're going to buy energy on this dip. If you believe, and this is the camp 
I'm placing my bets on, that this was a topping pattern and that a move, an 800% move in two, two years that has never pulled back to the 20 is likely gonna pull back to the 20 before doing anything. That's the camp I'm in. And the 20s at 178. Okay, and that aligns with this high here. So I'm looking for those same corrective patterns that we were talking about on the other charts. Just like that, that's all I'm looking for. And then from there we'll figure out, are we going to break out for two to four to six more years? Right? Is this chart really breaking this long-term downtrend? Because if it's breaking this long-term downtrend, there's nothing to say that rates couldn't go all the way back up to 15. Nothing. This is just wave one. Big old wave two. Right? There's nothing. That's how it starts. A massive move is how it starts. But you have to correct that move before you move higher. That's just how this works. And we, we don't really want to guess. You want to wait for the reversal candle, which you got. This gravestone doji-like thing. Hanging man, whatever the hell you want to call it. And then it closed below the following month. And that's what you just had happen. So that's how I'm using this information to affect my trades. And the negatively correlated, right, is TLT. Now, is TLT going to do, do anything here? I don't know, but she closed above last month's high at 117.34, closed at 117.43. That's huge. That's what gets the momentum to flip up. Okay, so the histogram's now rolling up. From this configuration, right, price can fall all the way back down here again, put in this inverse head and shoulders look, and then break out price could go sideways for a long time and just get outside this downtrend and then move. But it's clearly in a downtrend. TNX clearly in an uptrend pulling back. This is a downtrend reverting to mean. It's doing the opposite of what TLT is doing or the opposite of what TNX is doing. And so I view this as a reversal candle, now close above. That means let's go back to the 10. We're extended from the 10. When we get to the 10, we'll figure out what to do from there. I don't see price getting above this pivot low, 133. It's not gonna happen right away. Um, so yeah, and, and one more chart we'll look at before we leave is the TLT versus SPY ratio. And this has been you know, these have basically been positively correlated assets. Historically, there's, there's been an inverse correlation, but since the COVID lows, they've been positively correlated. And as a result, it's made no sense to own TLT. If this ratio can flip and get above the blue line, you'll see a flight to safety, i.e. the recessions here, um, get out of my equities, get into bonds. That is not what we're seeing. We're seeing that maybe a recession is coming, but it is not here yet in terms of are people buying bonds and selling equities. That's not what we're seeing. We're seeing equities are still favored over bonds. All right, well, that's all I've got for the week. If you like the content, hit the like button, share the video, subscribe, and we'll see you next week.